Hey folks, Doug Blade with Body Design University. In today's video, I wanna go over something with you in chapter 11 in the cardio respiratory um, assessments or fitness testing that, uh, that NASM uh, goes over with you. And a couple of things. First is, and, and I'm prompted, I was prompted to, to do this because I had seen a post in, and I, I do see them fairly regularly and I do have students uh, asking me, a post that had the Rockport, and that's what that's what we're going to talk about, by the way, the Rockport walk test, right? Um, it's just one of the assessments that NASM recommends that you use, and it has a chart for you to compare the amount of time it takes them to complete the test, and you check in, you determine what zone they would train in based on their VO, predicted VO2 max, and you can read through that. But the student had posted um, something from the sixth edition. Normally, it's not the end of the world. If you've got the sixth edition, you don't want to buy the seventh edition. You don't have to do it. But I want to make sure you're not uh, you're not confused because there are some changes, some are significant, some not so significant that NASM has made from the sixth to the seventh edition. And this was a big one, just so you know it. The Rockport walk test uh, used to be. Let me let me pull this up for you. Okay, let me share my screen. The way NASM does it today in the seventh edition, if you've ever seen this, you, you know, look, if you have the seventh edition and you, you've got their study uh, course, this is their cardio respiratory assessment sheet. And you'll notice that it has the YMCA three minute step test, uh, the rock, see the Rockport walk test right here. And you'll notice if, by the way, if you've never seen the sixth edition, don't worry about it, and it's not a big deal. But I do know that some folks are using it, and there's some confusion. And I want to make sure that you're not you're not pulling stuff also, by the way, off of the internet and using that just because it was free, it didn't cost anything, but you're using the wrong edition. Because what NASM did was from the 6th to the 7th edition for the Rockport walk test, they basically went from it, from using a... Um, calculated score for O2 that was compared against the chart to simply using the time itself. The way it used to be was that when you when you timed an individual, it's a one mile one mile walk, and all you're doing is having them start boom, and then you time how long does it take for them to do that. Now we know that person's age and their fitness level can be correlated and give us a sort of predicted VO2 max. The point is, is that what they used to do was once they once they got a time, if it was 10 minutes, 13 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, you would take that information with age and some other uh, data and you would put it into an equation and you'd come up with a O2 or VO2 max, not VO2 max, but an O2 score. And then you would take that score and you would compare it in the sixth edition textbook to their chart and you would determine uh, the the level at which they should start their training at what zone perhaps you would start them in. Now in the seventh edition, NASM probably correctly said, you know what, don't be doing the equations or anything like that. All you got to do is time them, take that information. Okay, you see where it says time and heart rate. You simply take that information. Okay, you see this because I'm gonna, gonna toggle, I'm gonna toggle back here for you to um I'm going to toggle, show you what it actually looks like now. And if you have your textbook, it's on page 373. Now what they do is they simply use the timed component. Literally, if it took 13 minutes, 10 minutes, let me get it here for you. If it took 11 minutes for a male between the age of 30 and 69, if it took 11 minutes to go to walk one mile, you're going to use that time now to determine their rating. Whereas the way it used to be in the sixth edition is that you would take the time and you'd have to put it into an equation, into a formula that would get you basically to here, but you'd have to do the measure, you'd have to do the equation. So all they did was they, they basically cut out the middleman part of it. And now they just say, look, if look, if you can do it in 11 minutes, then your your rating is good. That's going to help you then to determine um, where they would fit as far as their training. And that's what you'll that's what they'll kind of give you an idea of 
once you uh, once you continue through the rest of the chapter. So um, for the most part, it's not again, it's not that big of an issue, but I wanted to make sure that I that I clear that up for you. This this that, so that's the first thing is don't be don't be grabbing stuff off the internet. Don't be Googling Rockport and then you get the wrong sixth edition material because it's going to confuse you. That's pretty significant, okay, to be using an O2 score and then coming into your seventh edition book and going, I don't see anything for O2. And I know that's what uh, this one uh, student that posted this, I know that's what happened with it. She's, she got this sixth edition material and she was probably looking in a seventh edition tech. I don't know, but that's my assumption. Remember, sixth edition for the Rockport walk test, sixth edition, O2 score, um, equation, right? Math, all that other stuff. Seventh edition, nah, you don't need it. How long did it take them to walk a mile? 13 minutes, 16 minutes. Okay, well, if that's the case, if it's a female um, and it took 14 minutes and that female is between the age of 30 and 69, it's above average. And therefore, Therefore, I can start training them, whatever, at this level, maybe within zone two, I can do some zone two training based on what the OPT model then says about a person's fitness level when you start them from a cardio respiratory perspective. Hope that makes sense. Um, so that leads me then to, an, to a really good tip when it comes to actually studying this stuff, because remember, when you get into chapter 11, there's a lot of information um, on these assessments. Here's what I want you to do. And I say this I say this over and over. By the way, of course, I have a sheet of paper and I'd be writing this stuff down, perhaps even drawing pictures. But one of the things that's uh, really helpful, what NASM has done for you, is they've given you these um, the definitions on the side panel of each page. Do yourself a big favor. The type of question that NASM is going to ask you or questions that they're going to ask you specific to these assessments is not going to be something very precise. And that's one of the other things you got to remember. For the most part, this level of precision that you see in a chart, NAS they're not going to ask you a question that requires you to memorize all of these columns and these rows. They're not. If you do get a question, then I, I think I may have seen one or two, you may get a question that is very specific to an outlier type of type of variable. So, so for instance, for the YMCA three-minute step test for men between, you know, a 20-year-old male um, has a score of, you know, below 70 or below 60, that means that that individual's rating would be, and if you're with me on page 372, table 1113, up in that one box, all the way up to the top left, excellent, would be the rating for this individual, a 20-year-old, that has a score between 50 and 76. They may throw something like that out at you. What I will tell you is this, that in general, the answer is going to be one of the extremes, either excellent or really, really poor in general. But I'm not too worried about that from a precision level with these actual numbers. But here's what I do want you to know is that the YMCA test, the Rockport test, the, the one, you know, the one and a half mile run test, what you really need to know are the, are the uh, type of individuals that, would, that you would do the test with. So for instance, they would ask the question, something like a 25 year old college athlete uh, comes to you for training, which of the following cardiorespiratory assessment test would be most applicable for this individual. You're not going to do the Rockport walk test, right? Because what is the Rockport walk test designed for? Well, that's why you have these sidebars. Um, page 371, an aerobic test for what? Deconditioned individuals. That's one of the most important things to remember about the Rockport walk test. YMCA test. Uh, YMCA three-minute step test, aerobic test that measures cardiovascular fitness of an individual based on a three-minute bout of stair stepping at a specific cadence. Uh, you'll notice it doesn't specify on that definition whether it's a deconditioned individual, well-conditioned individual. It's pretty good for just about anybody. Um, the 
last one here for this particular of these assessments, the one and a half mile run test. Don't do this with deconditioned individuals. That's kind of the point. Aerobic test that measures cardi uh, cardiorespiratory endurance by having the participant cover the distance of one and, one and a half miles in as short a time as possible. Again, the questions generally that are related to these particular assessments are going to be more um, uh, qualitative than quantitative generally. And you'll you'll see it when you go through any of the practice exams that you would be would be taking. That's really the key. Understanding what the test is designed for, those three in particular are important. Last thing about this section, um, the other test, the ventilatory, uh, ventilatory uh, threshold or the VT test um, is probably the single most important part of this to remember. And I'm gonna tell you this just from a real world perspective because the you know VT testing to develop your zone one, zone two, zone three, um, is really real world. That's real world stuff because especially if you're dealing with athletes. Um, generally, when I when I train an athlete, I set up generally a four zone, a zone one, two, three, four. And sometimes, if it's a if it's an advanced athlete, um, I could potentially do a five zone, but that's very very rare. Generally, I'll set up a a four zone uh, for the average client. It's a three zone, and you're probably not even doing the VT2 test uh, because that's going to uh, get you up to a very um, high level, uh, high level heart rate level. Knowing VT1 is critical, uh, the talk test, and that's the other part of this particular chapter. So, what did I give you today? First off, be careful. Be careful when you're going out to to learn stuff or grab materials out out on the internet. Be, just be careful. Um, you know, sixth edition, sure, most of this stuff is very similar. It's not the end of the world if you don't want to get the seventh edition. I get it. But if you have a choice, go with the seventh edition. So there's no confusion between uh, the materials that NASM is, for instance, using um, with something like the Rockport test. And uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. So just be careful. Uh, but again, yes, a lot of the material is very much the same. Uh, just keep in mind also that the Rockport walk test is not the only part that had a significant change. Blood pressure standards have changed. Seventh edition has the correct ones. Uh, what else? Um, type of um, underactive, overactive muscles that are uh, specific to different postural distortion syndromes. Those again, Important because sixth edition has some different, you know, different different muscles noted than the seventh. So you got that, right? That's the first. And then second, let's actually go in here and just give you a little, little overview. You have four of these main assessments, the YMCA three-minute step test, the Rockport walk test, right? One mile deconditioned folks, the um, uh, one and a half mile run tests generally is going to be for more conditioned individuals right and then the the vt or the uh, ventilatory threshold test which is going to allow you to determine a specific heart rate specific heart rate that tells you essentially where an individual um, is at when it comes to the use of fat and carbohydrates that 50 50 uh, point where 50 50 percentage you know, carbohydrates are being used, fats are being used. That's basically what VT tells you. It tells you more. But once you develop that, once you know where that heart rate is because you've done the VT1 test, now you can differentiate between a zone one, a zone two. And then if you did a VT2 test, you can then develop zone three. And now you've got your, your programming um, a little bit more objective, all right? Subjectively, you would use the talk test to determine Right. If you don't have an actual heart rate, the talk test helps you with that. So I hope that was hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please just let us know. Leave your comments below. Please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. You can hit the, the bell for notifications. Thanks, folks. Have a great weekend. And again, remember, we're here to help you to pass the NASM exam on the first attempt. Of course, if it's not your first attempt then whatever attempt you're on, have a great weekend. We'll see you.